Hello everyone, Sirzy is back for another PowerPoint tutorial and we are still on the basic lessons for using the Morph Transition. Last time I had lots of fun playing with the Morph Transition using it as a magnifying lens effect spying on an imaginary landscape. In this video, I'm going to show and guide you with the steps I did to create that effect and for you to be able to practice and apply it in your own PowerPoint presentations. Let's launch our PowerPoint program and start with a blank template to work on. Like I said before, this effect works best on a flat image because it involves cropping the image to achieve the zoom in, zoom out, and the pan animation. Before we begin, let's delete these text boxes that we currently don't need in this slide. So let's get rid of all of this. There you go. We now have a clean white space to work on. Go ahead and insert an image that you would use for this effect by clicking on insert on the uh, menu bar, hit picture and look for that image that you need to use. So here I am with a copyright free image I downloaded from pixneo.com. The link is down in the description. Since this image is not completely covering the entire slide, I'm going to adjust its length on the left and on the right next step is to duplicate this slide slide number one and then we will be working on slide number two let's hit control or command c and then control or command v we'll be working on slide number two in the slide number two select the inserted image and then duplicate this image on the same slide again the same procedure control c or command c and then control v or command v to copy and paste position the duplicate copy exactly right on top of the original picture there you go. In the video where I showed you a preview for this tutorial, you will see that I started with a rectangular lens effect and then I transformed it into a circular lens effect. So we're going to start with the rectangular lens effect. Select the image that is on top and then hit picture format on the uh, menu bar and hit crop. Adjust the handlebars for the crop. Just enough to... Uh, create that rectangular lens that we need this will do just fine for now since this is just an example now that we have our image on top crop according to the shape that we need the next thing we're going to do is to make this appear like a lens select this crop image that is on top of the original image go to picture effects over here and then on bevel select whatever bevel presets that you would want to use so for example i'll be using this one next step is to give it a little bit of shadow to separate it from the background image so picture effects again then this time we go to shadow and select whatever preset that you would prefer i'm going to select offset bottom left if you need to adjust whatever effects applied, you just need to right click and then go to format picture. In the format picture panel at the right, I'm going to adjust my shadow. Adjust the transparency and a little bit of size will be added so that it will be more obvious. I'm going to add more blur on it. But it's up to you, of course. Okay, let's close that up. We now have this lens that is on top of this original image that is at the background. Next step is to change this into a circular lens effect. To do that, we need to duplicate slide number 2 and we will be working on slide number 3. Control C to copy and Control V to paste or Command C and Command V. Make sure that you are on slide number 3. Select the image, the crop image that is on top. Go to picture format, crop again but don't hit it. Click on the down arrow instead and then look for crop to shape and for under basic shapes, go for oval. Since this is an oval shape, we need to change it into a circular shape. So to do that, keep it selected, go to crop again, down arrow, and then this time we're gonna select aspect ratio and hit one by one. Click outside and we now have our circular lens effect okay this one is not yet zoomed in so the next step will be to duplicate slide number three Control or command c to copy Control or command v to paste we're gonna be working on slide number four for this step we need to have a little bit more extra space around the slide so go down to the right corner of your screen and zoom out select the image go to picture format and then hit crop 
as you can see even though we already cropped that image it was actually simply hiding away the other sections of this image to achieve the focus or zoom in effect click on any of this grayed out section pull out the handle to increase the scale so reposition the entire image so that we're gonna have the exact section of the image inside this window click outside we are now zoomed in in this particular section of this picture now it's time to do the basic animation we go to slide number four which is on the left panel and then hit ctrl or command c again and then ctrl or command b to duplicate slide number four and we will be working now on slide number five for example we will be moving our zoom towards the left side or left lower corner click on the zoom in image and then go to picture format hit crop again grab and hold any of the grade part area and move it until the lens or our imaginary lens focus on that section that we're going to be to hide away again this grade area just click on anywhere outside the slide reposition now this lens window to where the section focus is supposed to be located in the image for example, we will be focusing on this sunset, so we need to duplicate slide number 5, and then later on, we will be working on slide number 6. Make sure that you are on slide number 6, click the lens effect, click picture format, and then hit crop, hold on to any of the grade area, move it until the sunset or whatever that is you want to focus on your own picture to be inside this lens window now that it's all set click outside to hide away the other sections again position again the lens window to where the uh, section is focused supposedly and that is the sunset part this one so let's place this lens over that part click outside to deselect the lens image this time we're gonna do another zoom in we'll be uh, zooming in further towards that sunset and to do that duplicate slide number six and we will be working on slide number seven so make sure that you are on slide number seven click on our lens image go to picture format and then hit crop enlarge this section by pulling out the handlebars of the grayed out section of the image and then reposition it so that the same exact thing is centered in our window scale down again my workspace to give me enough space around this image i'm going to pull it up again i need more size for the sunset and that will do just fine for me click outside to deselect and we are done with the zoom in to zoom out just go ahead and click on slide number six duplicate it position the duplicate copy right beneath the last slide this will give us later on the effect of zooming back out next for example we will be zooming in on this section we're going to duplicate again the slide so that we'll be able to work on slide number nine later on and then we will be focusing and zooming in on this part of this image let's duplicate slide number eight Control c and Control v to copy paste on slide number nine click on the lens or the lens effect image go to picture format and hit crop again grab and hold any of the grade sections or the grade area move the image until the next focus point is centered in our window click outside to deselect and move our lens window towards which part this is supposed to be located on top of that one now to take a closer look again on this section we will be zooming in further duplicate again slide number nine make sure that you are on slide number 10 this time click on the lens effect window picture format hit crop adjust again or rescale again the image that is on top there we go i think that is good enough now i'm gonna click outside to deselect let me just bring this back up so we are now zoomed in further on this section of this view or this image compared to this one we are now zoomed in further to zoom out duplicate slide number nine and move it below slide number 10. for example we are done with this one we will move our lens back to the center and then we will go back to the rectangular lens just like how we started and for that i'm just gonna go back up copy paste slide number two and slide number three to the bottom of this column 
Since I'm supposed to reposition the circular lens back to the middle, I'm going to move this one slide number 13 under slide number 11. And finally, for this effect to work, we will now start applying the morph transitions to our slides. Select slide number 2, go to transitions, and hit morph. Select slide number 3, hit morph. Slide number 4, morph. And do the same exact thing, applying the morph transition to the rest of the slides all the way to the last slide. So here I am now running the presentation. We are on slide number 1. We will go to slide number 2 to bring out our rectangular lens. Let's change that to a circular lens by going to slide number 3. Now that we got our round lens set up, let's zoom in. We are now zoomed in. Next is that we're going to pan towards the lower left corner of the image by going to slide number 5. Let's move again and pan towards the sunset that is on slide number 6. That is a beautiful sunset so it's best that we focus further in. Zoom in to the sunset by going to slide number 7. And then zoom out by going to slide number 8. We will now pan towards the right side by going to slide number 9. This is a very clear high definition image. Let's zoom in. The quality of this image is very nice. We still have good details even though we already pushed in our focus. Let's zoom out by going to slide number 11. Let's recenter our lens. We will now go back to our rectangular lens. And now switching the lens off. So those are basically the steps I used to create the lens effect in PowerPoint using the morph transition complete with zoom in, zoom out, and pan animations. I hope I was able to share something worthwhile to you and something that you can also apply in your own PowerPoint presentations. If you enjoyed this simple tutorial, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more tutorial videos for teaching and presentation purposes, and share the tutorial videos to anyone who might want to learn and apply the same things. Thank you so much for your time. This is Sir Z, class dismissed.